Hello and welcome to Yarn Happy. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new, my name is Vanessa and yarn makes me happy. If it does the same for you, then stick around because I think you'll like it here. Um, I did skip last week, if you didn't notice, um, because I just kind of took the weekend off and I don't know, I just uh, almost didn't do anything at all. Like, you know, sometimes you just kind of turn off for a couple of days. That's pretty much what I did last weekend. And then I didn't really crochet that much for a couple of days uh, into the week either. Just kind of taking a little break. It's not like my hands were tired or like I was burned out or anything. It's just sometimes I just do other things for a couple of days. And other by other things, I mean like pretty much nothing. But sometimes you have to do that. And uh, now I'm back and I have made some progress. Uh, first, I do want to note in the intro, I was putting away, that's one thing I did earlier this week, uh, is put away all of my yarn acquisitions that had been piling up on the bed in here. I packed them all away. Uh, anything that's like wool or wool blend, I like to pack into plastic, uh, bags as airtight as possible, zip or, you know, some kind of pretty secure closure to try and keep them as clean as possible and keep pests out. Um, and I put cedar chips or cotton balls with like essential oils or something on them just to like hopefully keep anything from getting in there. And I do go through pretty much all my yarn uh, at least once a year, just get it all out. And look through it all because you know you never know like one bug gets in there and it's in the way back of the closet and if you don't ever see it then it spreads so anyway that's what I was doing at the beginning of the video now on to what I actually have accomplished I remembered while I was editing this video that I forgot to mention I took my stuff to the fair. So I went on Friday to take the parasol and my Oakley blanket to the state fair. Um, they drop off a couple weeks before the fair starts and then they keep it for like a week after. But those things are there now. And it always kind of makes me a little nervous to like leave stuff with them because you don't know where it's going to be stored, who's touching it. Um, like I'm afraid of getting the parasol back with like a big handprint on it or something, you know, but it's all right. It'll be fine. The doll came back in one piece last year, even though she was missing the box that I sent her in, but it's okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll see in a few weeks what the results of that are. Um, I did finish all the fruits panels. I will put up a picture of all them laying out. I'm not going to show them individually because they're all kind of in different processes right now. I started blocking them, uh, so I laid them out on my blocking mat, and I'm gonna show a little video here of um, what I was doing. So I laid out the mat, and I used a blocking rod to kind of give me a guide of where to line up the, uh, the edges. And then I just measured a little over four inches, like a 4.2 inches, kind of stretched out a little bit wider because they they bounce back. Um, they still bounce back a little bit, so I stretch them a little bit farther and try to block them all to 40 inches long by about four inches wide. And so far it has worked really well. Like um, the before and after of like the strawberry panel in previous picture I just showed um, and then the after of blocking it's like perfect and it still does slant a little bit which is fine because the plum one slants a little bit and then the orange is really slanted and I tried the color the way the colors are laid out in the picture is how I'm planning to lay them out in the blanket so the the diagonal ones actually I think space out nicely especially with the colors honestly it worked out great. The, I was just winging it and the colors and like the design of it all, it laid out pretty much perfectly 
Uh, so I'm really happy with that. So after I get them all blocked, and as far as blocking goes, um, I have to, I only have enough knit blockers to do about half of a panel at a time. So I get it all set up and then get my steamer, steam it really good for like maybe, maybe 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, and then let it cool and dry. And while it's cooling, I weave in the ends of the previous one. And then if I have to, if it's a really, if I'm really aggressively blocking it, like the strawberry one, the uh, pink grapefruit, and I think one other, I can't remember which one, I had to block pretty aggressively to get it to the right dimensions. Um, so I steamed it a little bit longer, let it dry, especially a little bit longer to make sure it was all the way cool and dry. Um, if that happens, then I will sit and work on something else, like uh, a sock that I've been working on, which I will show you in a little bit. But uh, yeah, so making good progress on that, and then once those are all blocked, which I should be able to finish tomorrow, like I said, since I have to stop and let it cool and do, you know, and I have to refill the steamer and, you know, you have to let the water cool to do that. So um, just all that stuff makes it take time. So I should be able to finish that tomorrow and then I'm going to start working on actually bordering them and then connecting them. I kind of have a plan for what I'm going to do for that so we'll see how it works out. Hopefully it works out how I envision it. That doesn't always happen but so far I had pretty good luck with this blanket so I'm optimistic. So uh, after that, I the sock I mentioned, so you remember the sock that I made that I showed you last time. This one. So I am making its counterpart. I'm not going to say twin because it's not exactly the same because I'm using different colors. This is the bottom. So this is the top. So I'm not, you know, I'm about halfway through. But these are going to be, these are going to be a pair because they're scraps. So I'm just kind of using what I've got, but I think they're gonna look pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. This pattern, I started, I just started this this afternoon. So it does not take long and it's very addicting. Like I didn't wanna stop and actually do anything else, literally. Like, uh, but I'm gonna film and edit the video tonight instead of finishing the sock. I'm sure I will still finish this tomorrow because it's just, I think it's because, you know, you cast on to start on each square and then as you go up, each row gets shorter. So it just like, it gets really addicting because it goes faster and faster and faster. And then you just cast on and do it over again. And it's just kind of a nice routine and, um, yeah, I don't know. These are really fun. So I really highly uh, suggest trying this pattern out. All right. And as far as on also on the socks, um, I've been playing around with Tunisian ribbing still. Um, I am going to test it not getting super great luck. Yeah, like I haven't hit like the perfect uh, technique yet. So I'm um, still kind of playing with that. Don't really have anything to show for that because, you know, like I said last time, you know, I do stuff and then I frog it or just, you know. So uh, still playing with that, but I have one more thing to try. And then I'm actually going to try to do Tunisian ribbing on the next project I'm going to start, which I should be able to start this week, which is the Heart's Desire sweater, which I have uh, shown in a previous video, uh, the picture from the pattern. And then also the yarn that I was going to use for that. Uh, but I will refresh your memory here on the yarns I'm going to use. So this is going to be the body of the sweater. It has these nice little flecks that match the brushed alpaca. So I think that this will look pretty cool. So I'm going to start that this week and I am going to test out some of the Tunisian ribbing for the cuffs and the bottom and, and all that. Um, 
And then, oh yeah, I'll probably start another pair of socks. These ones for me. Uh, the ones I'm making currently are a medium and they fit, but they're a little bit big. Like they fit perfectly, but you know, for a sock, you kind of want it to be a little small. So it actually has to stretch over your foot. So I'm gonna try making this small and I'm gonna use this one, which I have shown you before, but this is that one that has the really cool, like kinda psychedelic effect. So uh, I think this would look super cool with that pattern. So uh, I'm gonna do that. Hopefully start it this week. And then um, uh, the last, this little tidbit of information, I guess, is that I did place an order at Lady D's uh, which I've never ordered from them before and I have wanted some of their gradient cake yarns for a long time and so they have a sale going on my kryptonite oh, also if you hear noises of course it's the dogs they're chewing on things but um, yeah I made a pretty decent sized order and I have a couple of specific projects in mind for a couple of things I ordered and then others I just ordered because they're super cool looking so I'm really excited to show you guys that really excited to get those I don't know when they'll be here because I've never ordered from them before so I don't know how long it takes the company is in Germany um, so it could be you know I mean sometimes you order from overseas and it's here in like less than a week Sometimes it's three or four weeks, so we will see, but rest assured, I will show you when I get it. Um, that's actually all I have this week. Just, uh, I mean, good progress on a few things. So that makes the video pretty quick. So um, I will just keep working on that stuff that I showed you and see you next week. Bye.